be with you here this morning. Uh, continuing our new sermon series that's halfway through with today called This Is Us. This is us. This is talking about the five core values of Cross Community Church thus far. We've uh, learned that we as Cross Community Church are unapologetically biblical. Secondly, we learned, uh, what was it, Uh, that it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay there, right? It's okay to not be okay. And today I want to speak to you on this topic. We make disciples, not converts. Start with a little story for you guys. Imagine if you had one day to get everything moved out of your entire house. How many of you think that'd be a problem? One day, right? One day, you got to get everything moved out of your entire house. It's just you. You don't have your spouse. You don't have your partner. You don't have your workload children that you could make help you. It's just you, man. You got one day to move everything out of your house and... Man, that's a tough position to be in, but you have some friends, so you call your friends, and you're like, hey, check it out. Here's the deal. I got one day. I got 24 hours, man. I got to get everything out of my house. Can you come help me? And your friends are like, oh, yeah, I'm doing something right now, you know, this or that. I'll be there here in just a little bit. I promise I will come. And so you're like, all right, I got to get to work. I got to be working in the meantime. You start moving things out. You're trying to move furniture. You're trying to move valuable items, your bed, your dresser, all your clothes. Man, all of these things are in your home. And if your home's anything like mine, there's just a bunch of junk in there, man. Like, I can't imagine having to move it all by myself. But you start moving things. You realize you're not making very good progress. And hour after hour, the clock's ticking down. And you're getting a little bit out, but not very much. And time continues to wind down. Your friends are nowhere to be seen. I mean, they promised they would be there, but you're down to one hour left. And you come back in from the trailer and you look inside the house and man, there's just stuff everywhere. The problem is this, if you don't get it out, in this next hour, you're going to lose everything. The new owners are taking over ownership of everything left in the house, and you don't have things to move into your new house. What do you find yourself in? A disastrous situation, right? Not only is the ending to this hypothetical story a disaster, if the plan had just been followed through with, and your friends that promised they would help had come to help, you wouldn't have to lose anything. You see, if we decide as believers that have put our faith in Jesus Christ and in doing so received the commission to make disciples of all nations, if we decide to not follow through and we're only concerned with making converts rather than making disciples, we have failed to follow through on what God's great commission is for us. If you have your Bibles, I want to ask you to join me in Matthew chapter number 28. If you don't have your Bible, it'll be up here on the screen for you guys. But let's read the scripture that Lori read just a moment ago again together. The Word of God says, go. Everybody say, go. Therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of this age. You see, our mission here at Cross Community Church, you hear it every single Sunday, and I think Haley and Lori both have said it, and I'm going to say it for the third time. Our mission here at Cross is to lead all people to become fully devoted disciples of Jesus Christ. This mission comes from Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, and it's not a mission that we should take lightly. This is a core value of ours here at this church because all of our energy, our efforts, our time, and our resources, all that we do, go to accomplishing this mission. If there's something else, if it's anything else, 
we are doing it wrong because this is what Christ has commissioned us to do, is to accomplish this goal of making disciples. I want to lay just a little bit of context down for us as to what's happening in this scripture when we find Jesus commissioning his disciples to make disciples. Jesus has just been crucified. He's just been crucified. What that means is Jesus just went and died a humiliating, devastating death on a Roman cross, and he did so for your sins and for my sins. Jesus didn't go to the cross as a criminal. He didn't go to the cross as a guilty person. He went to the cross as an innocent man willingly so that his blood would cover our sins. Jesus was the propitiation of our sins. He was the full payment. He was the righteous one when we've not been righteous. And so he died on the cross, but he's also been risen from the grave. You see, we don't follow a man that did something for us and remains dead. Jesus left the grave. He walked out of the grave on the third day, as the scriptures tell us. And he's resurrected, and with his resurrection, he brings to us redemption. He brings to us deliverance, and the Word of God says it like this. It is finished. Thank God. It is finished. But also, Jesus, after his resurrection, he's been in contact with his disciples. Not only has he been in contact with his 11 most close following disciples, he's showed himself to over 500 disciples at one time. There was a huge gathering where a bunch of people that placed their faith in Jesus saw the resurrected Christ. And now we find ourselves, as Jesus is speaking, and we're reading his words from the Bible. They're on the Mount of Olives. Jesus is just moments away from ascending back into heaven to the right hand of the Father. And he looks at his 11, and he says, Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I've just commanded you. Three years you followed me. I've given you a lot of stuff. You know how to follow me. You are my disciples. Go and make more disciples. And so this passage, it's not to be taken lightly because this passage is our command as believers from our Lord or our master, our boss, Jesus, as to what we are supposed to be doing while he's in heaven at the right hand of the Father until he comes back. So maybe you've asked yourself this question, what in the world am I supposed to be doing? Now you know. Jesus says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. We know what we're supposed to do, but I want us to break it down just a little further here today. And I want to ask four questions that are going to help us understand how we make disciples, not just converts. The first question I'm going to ask and answer here this morning is, what is a convert? The second question is, what is a disciple? The third question is, how do I become a disciple? And the fourth question is, how do I make disciples? Disciples, you see, I want us to understand just exactly what Jesus has commissioned us to do. So that brings us to question number one. What is a convert? Everybody say convert. Convert. What is a convert? Isn't making converts a good thing? Like maybe you're a little misled or confused by the title of this message. Like isn't it a good thing for people to believe in Jesus Christ? And that's where you all go, uh, yes, yes, we want people to put their faith in Jesus Christ, right? It's a good thing to make, dis- or to make converts. However, the job is incomplete when someone puts their faith in Christ, okay? The job is not finished. Our commission has not yet been fulfilled when somebody believes. A convert in Christianity is someone whose mind is converted from a previous belief mindset, or faith to become a believer in Jesus Christ. For example, how many of you have met somebody that claims to be an atheist? 
Right? We all know that atheist. They say, I don't even believe in God. Well, imagine that person that says they don't believe in God comes to a point in their life where they're like, hey, you know what? That stuff about Jesus makes sense. I'm going to put my faith in Jesus. That's a convert. Another example. How many of you know a Muslim that uh, follows the religion of Islam? Right? Imagine that person following that religion. It's a faith. It's a belief. And they say, you know what? I don't know about that Muhammad guy. I think I'm going to put my faith in Jesus Christ. And so they convert. Right? They change their mind over this way to put their faith in Jesus. That is a convert. A convert is someone who's made a profession in Jesus Christ. Scripture considers converts to be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, For whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when someone makes a profession of faith and it's genuine and they mean it with all of their heart, they call on the name of Jesus, they put their faith in him, the scripture considers them to be saved. But that is the only the first step in making disciples. And it is and has to be the first step in making disciples. No one can be a disciple without first being a convert, right? So the sermon title, as I said, it's a little bit misleading because we want to make converts. We want people to profess Christ because we want all converts to be fully devoted disciples. We are not satisfied as the church of Jesus Christ partially fulfilling the Great Commission. I don't know about you, but I am not satisfied when somebody puts their faith in Christ. I want to see that person be committed to following Jesus. And as the student minister, I have an incredible opportunity here at this church to see young students put their faith in Christ and then grow in that faith. And I get to play a part in their lives, and I'm so thankful for that opportunity. But you see, not all professing converts become fully devoted disciples. How many of you have ever seen somebody walk an aisle, pray a prayer, get baptized, stick with it for just a moment, and then you've never seen them again? We've seen a lot of that, hadn't we? We've seen a lot of people make a profession of faith. Whether or not it was genuine, I'm not the one that gets to decide that. But we've seen that so many times, and we saw that they did not become a fully devoted follower of Christ. The problem although lies with us a lot of times because we fail to follow through. How many of you know it's your responsibility to take that person that's put their faith in Christ and grab them by the hand and say, hey, come follow Jesus with me. Like that's what we're commanded to do. That's what we're supposed to do. And so this begs the question then, what is a disciple? What is a Disciple. You see, a disciple is more of a religious term that was used in Judaism to explain a devoted student that follows a teacher closely. So much so, hear what I have to say here, they would not only know what the teacher knew, but would live as the teacher lived. Like That's a big deal. There's a huge distinction there in a convert and a disciple because converts know some information about Jesus. Like you have to know that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and he rose from the grave on the third day. Like you have to know that information and that information is life changing. But a disciple doesn't just know information. A disciple or, uh, yeah, a disciple doesn't just have some scripture memorized from a book. A disciple is willing to commit their life to follow their leader. Big question, who's our leader? Jesus, right? Like we're following Jesus. Jesus commanded those willing, follow me. I've heard this said, and I think it rings true. Making converts is easy, but making disciples is one of the hardest things to do. Making converts is easy. Why? Because salvation is free. What's more compelling than offering the masses a free salvation? But making disciples is difficult because discipleship will cost you everything. Following Jesus will cost you everything. Jesus said, if you desire to follow me, take up your cross every single day and follow me. But what did that mean? 
It meant surrender. It meant sacrifice. It meant that you die to your sinful flesh and you put on the new life that the Spirit of God gives you. Being a disciple, man, it's a process. It's a process that lasts an entire lifetime. It's a process called sanctification, and here's the reality. Discipleship is a journey wherein conversion is a moment. Conversion's a moment. Discipleship is a journey. It's a daily devotion to not just consume and know information, but to live out your gained knowledge as you follow your leader closely. Like Jesus paved the way. He laid a path to righteousness, and he has given us his word declaring who he is to us and how we can please him and how we can live like him and for him. And that is what he expects us to do. You see, the biggest contrast between a disciple and a convert is the fruit the fruitfulness of the two. The Bible teaches that disciples will be known by their fruit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 read, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Like the Spirit, when it comes into your life and indwells the believer, it begins to change you from the inside out. And disciples of Jesus Christ with the Spirit's leadership and guidance in their life, they begin to produce fruit. A convert makes a profession and there's no fruit yet seen. It's a big question mark. It's like, we shall see if this is the real deal. Some of you know people that's in that moment of their lives right now. They've made a recent profession of faith, but it's a big question mark. Was it genuine? Was it real? Was it true? Are they born again believers? Will they produce fruit? But a disciple's profession is followed by fruitfulness. And so it's not a big question mark. We are seeing the evidence of their salvation, and it is making an impact in their life. That is discipleship. In my life, at the age of seven, on the back of a church bus, I can remember an emotional experience that took place in my life where I prayed a prayer, and just a week or two after that, I was baptized. But you know what? That was a conversion moment, a profession of faith that was followed by no fruitfulness, ultimately led me to understand that I had prayed a prayer, but I didn't mean it and believe it with my heart, and I was not saved. My life was not followed with fruitfulness and godly characteristics, but as I got older, I began to live in sin. I began to practice sinfulness, and the Spirit of God was nowhere present in my life. I began to indulge in uh, sexual immorality. I began to drink when I became of age. At least I waited till I was 21, right? That makes it better. No. Like, uh, I began to drink. I began to party. I began to do things that would hurt and harm my family. And in my early 20s, by the grace of God and through faith in Jesus Christ, I was born again. I was indwelled of the Spirit of God. And there was a conversion moment. But that was just the beginning because now I'm on a journey of following Jesus Christ. And I can honestly say that from that moment, though I've screwed up time and time again, I have never and will not ever be the same. I promise you, because I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I am following him. And so let's ask the question, how do I become a disciple? Maybe you're asking that same question here today. Maybe the story that I just shared just briefly resonates with you here this morning. Maybe you're like, you know what, I I put my faith in Jesus some time ago, but there has never, ever, ever been any fruitfulness. How do I become a disciple? You see, it starts with hearing and believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
The Word of God, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all that believeth. It starts with the gospel. It starts with the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, but it doesn't end with hearing the gospel. As the Holy Spirit enters your life and begins to change you from the inside out, you begin to obey Christ's commandments and live out your faith. So practically, what does this look like? Well, here at Cross Community Church, we hold to the six practices of a disciple. And so I want to walk very quickly through those six practices with you for just a moment. The first thing is this. As a disciple, you devote daily. Every single day of your life, you are abiding in Christ and in his word. Guess what? Even when you don't feel like it. How many of you have ever woken up in the morning and you just didn't feel like it? Amen. Got a couple of honest people in here. I promise you sometimes, dude, I'm a church staff member. <laughs> oh, I just wake up and I'm like, you know what, dude? I did not want to pray today. I did not want to read my Bible today. I don't want to go to work and hang out with those righteous people at the church. I just want to do my own thing. But you know what? To be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have to devote daily. You have to be disciplined. And so even in the moments of I don't want to, you choose to. Because you follow Jesus Christ, and he gave it all for you, and he paid it all for you. And what would have happened if Jesus wouldn't have showed up on the day he was supposed to pay for our sins? Devote daily. Number two, we gather consistently. You join a local body of believers. That's what we are here today, Cross Community Church. You submit to the eldership and the leadership of the church, and you gather with that body as often as you can, and you take every chance to be filled with Bible preaching and teaching, encouragement, and sometimes, you know what? You gather, and the Word of God rebukes you. But you gather consistently because you love the body of Christ. You serve faithfully is the third thing. You use your God-given gifts to build up the body of Christ, even if you think you're not gifted. And some of you are sitting here today, and you're saying, I'm not like that dude that's up there on the stage able to speak and able to talk. You hear me now, and you hear me clear, and you hear me well. If you are a saved child of God and dwell by the Holy Spirit of God, you have a God-given gift, and you have a capability to serve his church. Serve faithfully, behind the scenes. You don't have to be the face. You serve Christ. You don't serve me. You don't serve Jason. You don't serve anything but the body of Christ and ultimately Jesus. You are gifted. You give sacrificially. Number four, understanding the kingdom of God is your eternal destination. You make the decision to give your time, resources, and talents as an honorable sacrifice to Christ. You commit to community. You live life with people that you're connected with. You do that for accountability, counsel, encouragement, and correction. One of the main things I love about Cross Community Church is we believe that authenticity is unmatched when it comes to building relationships and growth. Like we believe that people should know who you actually are, right? Because then you can actually be helped and we can love one another throughout that, despite that. And the final six thing, six practices of a disciple is we engage missionally. And so we see the bigger picture of what God is doing all throughout the world, and that starts with our next door neighbor. Right? Like God is doing something. He's building his church. And that starts with our next door neighbor. But it means that we're willing to not only be a disciple of Jesus Christ, but make disciples of all nations. And so that begs this final question. How do I make disciples? Better yet, how do we make disciples? Only disciples make disciples. Did you know that? Only disciples 
Only devoted followers of Christ make devoted followers of Christ. Why do I say that? Because anybody that's not put their faith in Christ can pick up a Bible and read a scripture and God can use that word and the Holy Spirit can use that message to convert somebody. But the truth is this, you cannot give somebody what you do not have. Did you know that? If you're not a disciple of Jesus Christ, you can disciple nobody. It's not possible. You can't give somebody what you don't have. I have to follow Christ to show others how to do so. And I need the Holy Spirit to do that. And Jesus, in his commission, promises us the Holy Spirit. He says, behold, I will be with you always and even to the end of this age. What is he saying? Jesus is going to like be right here beside us holding our hand in the flesh? No, he says, I'm going to send the Spirit of God to live within you, to never leave you, to never forsake you, to be with you every single day, to help you follow me and bring others along with you. Like, praise God for that. Considering all we've discussed, like we have to make sure here at Cross Community, our success at the Great Commission isn't based upon numbers, professions of faith, baptisms. It's not based upon church roll numbers. It's not based upon how much money's in our budget. It's not based upon how many seats or or, or butts are in seats today. It's based upon how well we make disciples. Some churches and leaders have committed to numbers. Some churches and leaders have said publicly on TV, we're not concerned about discipling them. We just want a bunch of people to get saved. And like some of you would agree with that statement, but that statement is not fulfilling the Great Commission. It's a, it's a celebration when people get saved. But you know what? It's a devastation when we leave them there. It's a devastation when we leave them there. When success is measured by numbers in different categories, the growth that takes place in the low number seasons goes unnoticed and uncelebrated. Like we have had the joy over the past couple of months to baptize a bunch of people up here on this stage. But you know what? That is not the greatest celebration that we get to take part in. The greatest celebration that happens on earth and in heaven is when one of those people that we dunk under the water goes on to fully devote themselves to following Jesus Christ. And we get to walk with them and celebrate with them. It's an incredible opportunity that we have. Back to the text. Making disciples, that phrase, those two words, is a verb. It's like an action that we as believers do, but there are other words in that sentence that modify those words. And those words that we see are go, baptizing, and teaching. Let's look at the scripture here together. Everybody say go. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing. Say baptizing. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching. Everybody say teaching. Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. We go abroad with the gospel. Like that's your next door neighbor. That's the person that's in the convenience store. That's your coworker at work. That's the person that you turn down the aisle at the grocery store and you're like, go the other way like we go abroad with the gospel because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation but we don't stop there we don't just take the gospel and throw it out there those that get saved the Bible says we baptize them and baptism is an identification with the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ ultimately it is a public profession of an inward change where the believer proclaims to his church and to the world, I am on team Jesus. This is a bold statement, and when someone does that, they become a part of the body of Christ, and we have the responsibility to then do the final thing, and that is to teach all believers to obey all of God's word. 
living a life of holiness, confession, repentance, surrender, commitment, forgiveness, patience, self-control, and what is the number one marker of a disciple of Jesus Christ? Love. We love one another well. You see, the evangelist makes converts. Praise God there's evangelists out there that are, uh, that are spirit-filled, anointed men of God that proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. They come into churches. They go out into the world, and they share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank God we have evangelists, and God has called some to be evangelists. But the church as a whole, and more specifically, our local body, takes those converts and does what? makes disciples. We make disciples. This is our task. This is the ministry that we are being equipped for. You see the story I told you at the very beginning of the message. It was one that really resonates with me because a couple of years ago, me and my wife sold our home that we lived in for six years together, the one that we built most of our family in. And we closed very quickly on this home, which led us to have to move out of our home very quickly. And with such short notice, we began to panic and we began to call friends and family. And because of the short notice, we were left with moving a lot of the stuff on our own. As a matter of fact, on on move out day, as we signed the paperwork at the abstract place, we had four hours to get multiple trailer loads worth of junk out of our home and into a storage building. And by the grace of God and thanks be to God, we got it all out. We didn't have to lose anything. But what we need to realize is this. Christ has called us to follow him. He's called us to bring as many people with us as possible. This doesn't simply mean we share the gospel with them and leave them on their own to figure it out. This means that we follow through. We follow through. We are called to make disciples, not converts. So let me close with two final questions. Two final questions. Number one, are you a disciple? I'm not asking you, listen, I'm not asking you here this morning if you prayed a prayer. I'm not asking you if you've shaken a preacher's hand. I'm not asking you if you've been baptized. I'm not asking you if you're a member of Cross Community Church. I'm not asking you how much you give in the offering plate. I am asking you, have you put your faith and trust and hope in the person of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior? Have you been spirit-filled and born again of the Holy Spirit of God? Are you following Jesus today? Are you a disciple? And secondly, are you making disciples? I'm not asking you once again, not asking you how many people you've prayed a prayer with. I'm not asking you how many times you've shared the gospel and somebody has responded and been converted. I'm not asking you how well you do at greeting people at church. I'm asking you, when is the last time you grabbed somebody by the hand as you were on your way to the cross of Jesus Christ and said, come with me as I follow our Lord? Are you making disciples? As Haley comes up and we go to close out this message, we're going to have a time of response. What I would love to see happen, what I've been praying that would happen is if there's one or many here today that have never even made a profession of faith, maybe today's the first time you've ever clearly, plainly heard the gospel of Jesus Christ presented. Maybe it's the thousandth time you've heard it, but God is doing a work in your heart right now. If that's you, I want you to know that the scripture is clear. Today is the day of your salvation. If that's you, would you come? Maybe you've called on Jesus, but you've not lived a life of devotion and surrender to him. Maybe today's the day that you need to do that. Maybe today's the day that you need to become a disciple. And maybe you're here today and you've put your faith in Christ. Maybe you are a disciple, but you failed to follow through on the Great Commission and make disciples. If that's you here today, would you come and respond? 
and repent of that sin to not make disciples and commit yourself to fulfilling fully the great commission? Let me pray for you. Father, we come to you just asking you in this moment, God, just to be with us. God, would your spirit move about this place today where we trust you, we love you. God, we do apologize for our failure to follow through on making disciples, God. And we pray that each and every believer that's in this room today, God, would see the importance of making disciples and not converts, God, but that we would commit our lives, God, despite the busyness and the chaos, God, to making fully devoted followers of Jesus. Help us, God. Give us strength and courage in this moment, God. And we lift up our praise to you even now, God. We pray and beg these things in Jesus' name. Amen.